Hi everybody, and thanks for joining me today. So, continuing to work on this uh, new start, the Majora's Mask pattern. And I've got a bunch of new subscribers recently, so um, welcome if you are brand new, and uh, welcome back if you're returning. And thank you everyone for such lovely uh, comments about my finished piece. That was just so nice. As you can see, I've had a lot of big blocks of color, so I got quite a lot done since my last video. I made another tutorial about uh, my my uh, stitching method this time of how I begin a brand new project. So yeah, I had some requests to see that, so. Yeah, so far, this pattern has been entirely blue. <laughs> this entire section has been all shades of blue. Hasn't been anything else. So We'll see what we get. Yeah, this is overall a very uh, blue kind of pattern. But yeah, this one's going very quickly. As you can see, I'm almost at 3% already because, uh, yeah, like I said, this is a, a smaller than my usual size project. So the next one after this that I'm going to have on my stitch with me is when this is done is probably going to be the... Uh, Peacocks, the uh, Marvelous Garden from Heaven and Earth Designs. And that one's over 300,000 stitches, so that one will take a little longer. However, it has um, more blocks of color than my last project, the uh, Soulful Mediterranean Tranquility. So, yeah, it, it will probably go quicker than that one did. That was the most complex piece I've ever done. The confetti was pretty unrelenting. But it was worth it. I'm really, really happy with the uh, the finished product. So, yeah, I have to go out and get myself some uh, some fabric and and uh, other supplies to mount it. But that will be coming. I'm thinking I probably won't get it to it until the new year because you know Christmas is always busy, <laughs> so much to do. So, yeah. Buying the material will be my Christmas present to myself, but I probably won't get that done until January. But when I do get it done, I will post uh, on Insta. And I will also show you in, you know, one of my monthly update videos how it looks. Because I know a lot of you are very eager to see that, so... That's still a shade of blue. <laughs> That's funny. 3807. So there are so many colors. I believe I counted it was 120. So I'm having to use uh, two tubs because, yeah, I could just not fit all those envelopes in one tub. As you can see, my nail finally grew out enough that uh, I don't have to wear my stylish piece of tape on it anymore. It's a funny shape because it's just barely past the nail bed, that part that was broken. But <clears throat> yeah, at least it's almost completely grown out now. After I slipped with that knife, which, yeah, so thankfully I only, I only cut my nail not anything else because that would have not been fun <laughs> so yeah as you can see there's quite bigger blocks of color here but we're starting to get into a bit more uh, detail here along this uh, edge I'm gonna go to um, row 60 
that's what fits usually pretty comfortably in my frame. When I work on 14 count anyway. When I work on 18 count then, I think I fit more like 80 or even 90 rows in the frame. So yeah, that's one drawback with working on these uh, larger counts is, uh, is you do have to move your frame more often. Yeah, we'll see if I get any other colors besides blues when I get to that uh, area along that left edge there. There's a few more colors. And then up at the top of the diagonal, we'll start moving into the uh, Happy Mask Salesman. So there'll be more colors than just blue there. But yeah, this area has been a lot of blue. It's not been all entirely one color, so that's kept it interesting, at least. Okay, new color here. Ah, my first non-blue color. <laughs> 3861. Yeah, most of the colors in this are in the uh, 3000 and up range, for some reason. The newer colors are not the older more standard ones. These are the ones that they uh, released over the years to sort of, they said, fill in gaps in the uh, color spectrum among the standard colors. So yeah, they keep adding new ones. And then they added some zero to 100 colors as well. And then some colors, of course, get uh, discontinued. Yeah, because my husband was asking why there are missing numbers and I said well that's why there's old colors that they discontinue later and I know there's some that they had dots either before or after the uh, color number because it indicated that they had changed the uh, dyeing process a bit to be more um, environmentally, environmentally friendly which meant that the newest stuff may not perfectly match with the oldest stuff. So they put the dot on there to sort of warn you <laughs> to, uh, to check. Yeah, I found that on, somebody made a blog post about it because I was like, why are there dots on these? Uh, <laughs> yeah, some of these color numbers, so. Oh, another, another one that is blue. <laughs> 38. Yeah, 38, 39. Yeah, I get paranoid, and if I'd had a color for a really, really long time, um, and I was going to need more than one uh, hank of it, then I found I would um, buy all new stuff because I don't want to risk dye lot issues. Yeah, I learned that the hard way in knitting as well. <laughs> always buy uh, extra yarn in the same dye lot just in case. You can always use up the, uh, the extra ones later. Yeah, I have a few um, patterns that are, uh, call them stash busters, that... Uh, use up the little bits. You'd rather have too much than not enough. Always sucks when you get to <clears throat> halfway through the second sleeve and run out of yarn <laughs> on your sweater. One, two, three. Or occasionally I would, um, I had where I hit it by, um, doing like the cuffs and the collars and stuff and the edges of the sweater in the slightly different dye lot so it didn't look 
didn't look too weird instead of getting like a complete you know line right across the belly of the sweater that would really suck be really obvious okay 37 46 another blue Blue is my favorite color, so I don't really mind all this blue. Actually, this one's kind of more of a purple, sort of periwinkle color. Yeah, than an actual blue. But I mean, I guess that's close on the color wheel, right? Yeah, had a lot of these uh, colors were left over from... Um, making my um, Northern Lights cross stitch, the Make-A-Wish painting, uh, which was charted by Artisy. Yeah, so of course, because it was Northern Lights in the sky, had lots of purples and blues and greens. Yeah, I have actually seen the Northern Lights in real life, but um, I didn't get any of the pretty purple and pinks. They have to be pretty intense to get that color. I've seen like sort of the yellowy, greenish ones. My husband has seen the purpley, pink ones before, but it has to be a really clear night and it has to be quite intense to see that. If you go further up north, I imagine they would be, they would be more visible. Although we're fairly far north, enough that yeah. When the conditions are just right, we can see them. Yeah, when I lived in BC, never saw them because uh, it wasn't clear enough. And I think because we lived down in the lower mainland, first on Vancouver Island, and then, yeah, the Fraser Valley, it's not up north enough to really see them. And the cloud cover hangs quite low, so. Okay, 791. And another blue. <laughs> okay, I think I might actually put this uh, color into my working tray now. I hadn't come across it till now, but it looks like I'm gonna be using it a fair amount. Yeah. So in that case, I put it into my working tray and then that way I don't have to keep going back and forth to the envelope. So I can't do that with all my colors because I got about 20 spots in my tray and of course there's 120 colors so I can't have them all out at once. So I sort of <clears throat> cycle what colors I have in there depending on where I am in the pattern and what I'm using lot. <clears throat> yeah, I'm happy my Christmas shopping is all done, but now I got to get going on the baking. <laughs> oh, except I said that, but actually I still need to buy currants uh, for making the uh, steamed Christmas pudding. Yeah, I make that every year. It's actually got carrot and potato in it, which sounds kind of weird, but it's really good because <clears throat> it also has uh, raisins, currants, like three different kinds of raisins, butters, uh, you know, cinnamon and nutmeg, and it's so good. My dad always had it with rum on it, too. It's like a traditional English, British kind of, they call it pudding, but it's almost more like a cake. Like I've had plum pudding and yeah, it's almost like a, like a cake, so. Yeah, I read a lot of historical books. So they had where people would make a wish while they were stirring the Christmas pudding. Everybody got to have a turn and you got to uh, make a wish. And um, there was some, they said they would put like a, 
a bean or sometimes a shilling or something. And if you caught, if you found it, if you were the one who got the piece that had the, uh, the object in it, then uh, your wish would come true, is what they would say. Oh, good, my food's here. Yeah, we had a few weeks ago where um, they said that they had delivered my food, but it wasn't there. And then a couple hours later, it showed up and I said to my husband, I guess they probably scanned, accidentally scanned our package when they were dropping off somebody else's. And then, yeah. So it showed as being delivered when it hadn't been. But uh, yeah, I'll go and get it in a bit. And I kind of went walking around to the uh, neighboring streets that had our house number to see if it had been accidentally dropped there, but it wasn't. Uh, yeah, yeah, it showed up. So. Yeah, I had one time there. They said, oh, we're, we're, we'll deliver it on Monday. And it's like, uh, guys, it's a box of food with perishable food in there. That's not going to work, you know? <laughs> oh. And then, yeah, so somebody did finally go back to their warehouse and find it because, yeah. It's like, well, if you don't, then you guys are going to have to uh, pay us for the value of the package because, yeah, it'll be ruined. It's not like it's books or, you know, clothes or something. It's uh, It's food. So... Yeah, I'll do a separate thread for those two other stitches that are sort of on the uh, left there. tiny little knot in that thread. I don't know how that happens sometimes, but it's so small that I'm gonna not bother to end off my thread and restart it because yeah, it's really, really tiny. So just as long as I make sure that it, yeah, so I'm gonna have to go a bit out of order here to ensure that that knot stays on the back. I don't obviously want it on the front. Kind of skipped around there to uh, make that happen. So yeah, I often like to come from the right hand side in, but sometimes it just works out that the thread is on the other side and I'm working from the left side out, but that's fine. You can see a big block of this color here. Yeah, it's been interesting. I've been watching, um, there's a YouTuber who makes some just little, you know, one minute or less kind of little videos about different things in Majora's Mask, the game, which is what this pattern is. And um, yeah, I said, I played that game multiple times, but they still keep finding things that I didn't know. There was so much detail put into that game. Yeah, so I've kind of been enjoying watching those little those little snippets. Yeah, I heard that they might be remastering um, Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask on the Switch, but it could be just a rumor. 
if that's the case, I would totally get it. Yeah, those were my two favorites out of this series. We've played Twilight Princess and we've played The Wind Waker and um, Breath of the Wild. That was, yeah, which was different because that one was very um, much more of an open world game. And uh, like it still had a story, but it wasn't, it was non-linear, they said. So, yeah. We really enjoyed that, but those two were definitely my favorites. Those were actually my introduction to the uh, to the series because um, when I was growing up, we weren't allowed video games. We didn't have any consoles, so um, my husband was the one who actually uh, introduced me to those games. So yeah, we never played the original Nintendo, um, you know, Legend of Zelda ones. Although we have it now because um, we got the uh, that re-release they did a few years ago of the uh, NES Classic. So, um, yeah. I should really, like, a link to the past and stuff, I should really play it. <laughs> I just haven't got around to it. But yeah, I said, like, I um, wasn't allowed to have gaming consoles when I was a kid. So now my husband and I have, like, six of them, I think. <laughs> Oh, yeah, he was kind of surprised, actually. He'd never met a girl gamer before. I said, well, we exist. It's just a lot of the gamer spaces are so hostile to women. So, yeah, I said we stay out of them. So, But, yeah, when we were first dating, we weren't big on going out. So after a couple of official dates, we started staying in and playing video games together. So, <laughs> We still like to sometimes. Yeah, it's funny. Um, our uh, son, he really into Minecraft for a while, and he uh, he got some uh, stuffed animals from them. And of course, they're very pixel pixelated looking, right? Because they're designed to look that way, like the classic eight bit. And so, yeah, he has a wolf that he wanted to name Wolfie. And my husband's like, no, you should call him 8-Bit, you know, because that's what he looks like. So he has two of them. So one is called 8-Bit and one is called Wolfie. <laughs> Compromised. Hmm. Okay in what I did there. So sometimes with a big section, I'll go across several diagonals at once, if that's the way it goes. And sometimes I split it up because I didn't want to go past here and do these ones because that would close in all the stitches above them. And I don't really want to go all the way back up here yet. So So that is why I chose to do it that way. On another day, I might have decided to fill all that in so I could do this entire color at once. Just kind of depends on my mood. So, okay. And another <laughs> blue. Oh my gosh. Okay, 792. Yeah, I have a lot of this, like 792, 793, 797, 798, 799. So I'm kind of having to split them up a bit in my tray because the shades right next to each other are really close and I don't want to mix up putting the thread in the wrong, the wrong little uh, section, so. Yeah, even though I like to keep it sometimes in number order, sometimes I split them up in my working tray because I don't want to mix up the colors. Okay, so this one here. 
So yeah, we're approaching the bottom edge for this pass. Oops. Because yeah, if you've watched my other videos, you know that I, I go down, you know, 60 rows and then I just leave a straight line along the bottom and carry on that way. Uh, some people like to feather their bottom edge too, but I haven't found a problem with lines, so I don't bother. And if I feathered it, then I would be closing some stuff in, so yeah. But do it however it works for you. It's your project. You can follow my method, or you can do it your own way, entirely different. This is supposed to be fun. Okay, 799. I think I might need a new thread for this. Yeah, these are all pretty short. So I'm going to get an entirely new one. go back from the right hand side now so I'm starting a new thread but then often that means when I end up doing the next diagonal I'll be starting those ones from the left side that's kind of how that happened in the first place with this earlier so but it all works out to looking the same at the end mm -hmm. There, I was having a hard time finding the uh, finding the spot from the other side sometimes. Just trying to not stitch over my grid line here as it's uh, easier to remove then. Of course it's not perfectly straight, but oh well. That happens sometimes. I know where it's supposed to be, so. Seventeen. Okay, I think that's a gray, so not a, not another blue. Yeah, I don't have the, uh, after a while I often will have the sort of the symbols memorized so I know which color is what, but uh, this is a brand new project, yeah. You have to be careful because there's no standard symbols for um, certain colors. They can't really do that because uh, there's just not enough symbols. Like I think they said Heaven and Earth Designs does the max color is 240 because that is the maximum number of different symbols that they have. So, and there's more than 240 DMC colors. So, yeah. Yeah, I've heard a lot of people saying they wish like that, you know, the number three could always be whatever color, but yeah, as they say, it's just not feasible to do it that way. So, yeah, getting a few more threads in this area. Back to this one. Ah, yes, I didn't bother leaving this threaded as this is super short. 
it's only long enough to do this one stitch, which of course is why I chose it. Funny, when you actually want to split the, th the fabric there, <laughs> doesn't want to split on for you. Always the way. Okay, let's see. And another blue, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, I think this is like 120 different colors and something like 80 of them are blue. So, <laughs> yeah, there is a lot. Actually, this one is kind of a purpley, purpley blue. Yeah. That's a purple. It's hard to see till I got it into the light there. funny talking about video games earlier I've been through lots of different uh, technology changes my uh, my husband's five years older than me and he said they had an original Atari with the pong so yeah all the way from that is they have now the virtual reality games oh man seen so many videos of people breaking stuff and running into stuff like yikes Ugh. Yeah, that's one of the dangers with the virtual reality. Like, you can know that what you're seeing is not where you really are, but, yeah, your brain still gets fooled. So it thinks you can have a wide open space to run and you don't have any room to run. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I remember when the, uh, the Wii first came out and uh, they said there were a lot more... Uh, uh, ER injuries from people accidentally punching stuff and things but uh, yeah now it's even worse because now people got their eyes covered in, with the goggles and they can't actually see where they're going <laughs> oh dear yeah so this pattern wasn't entirely pattern keep compatible. It was funny, the floss list came through except for two of the colors. And then I entered them manually and then it was fine. So yeah, I don't know why that happened, but yeah. As long as it does work. Yeah, having to spend a, a minute putting in two colors into the, uh, the legend is a, a small price to pay. I was stitching for a bit today before I made the video so you can see I've got quite a lot done today already because uh, yeah there have been big blocks of color so I'm just uh, zipping right through look at that I'm at 3.14 I'm at pi <laughs> mm -hmm. 
being a little laggy, I probably have to reboot it. I haven't done that for a while. However, I have to say it's been a, been a really good deal. This was the Kindle Fire and I got it on a Black Friday sale like, who, three years ago now? Yeah. And each year I think maybe this is the year I'm going to need to replace it, but so far I haven't had to, so I'm thinking when I do, I might go up to the 10 inch screen. Although this eight inch is definitely workable, but yeah, I might spring for the extra for a bigger screen. We shall see. Yeah, there was someone who said that uh, their kid had a huge tablet. It was like 18 inches or something. They said actually it turned out to be almost too big. So, so there is that. Okay, let's see. A new color again. 336, another blue. Yeah, that is a navy. A navy blue. There was a lot of that in my last pattern. Not as much here. Like, yeah, my last pattern, there was like, oh, I think 15,000 stitches of this color. So yeah, it was a lot. Let's just see, I've got quite a few leftover pieces here. I'm trying to see what length I want to use. Okay. Whether I want to start a brand new piece or use up a couple of the smaller ones. So, yeah, I think I will use up some of the smaller ones as there's not much here and I don't want to end up with even more leftover pieces. So, yeah. Yeah, it was funny because I think this was the one it listed on Etsy and it was Etsy and it was like, you know, warning large large pattern and then I looked at it and it's like oh yeah well when you're used to doing huge projects for like having nurse designs and artisy yeah less than 50,000 stitches is not a huge project it's all relative but yeah like I said before when I first started stitching that would have seemed ginormous Yeah, some of the first ones I did was a dimensions pattern, so it's, it wasn't full coverage. And uh, I was much slower then. Like, I think that only had maybe 20,000 stitches, but it took me like two years to do it. Yeah, I was much slower then. <laughs> Yeah, a few things that helped with increasing speed was especially this learning to stitch two-handed. So one hand above, one hand below. That, uh, that speeds it up as you're not having to move your hand back and forth from above to below and back again. Yeah, that made a big difference. The parking ended up being faster. Of course, the uh, Pattern Keeper app definitely made a huge difference in that. And then, yeah, my no longer using bobbins, so I don't have to unwind and wind. My floss constantly has also helped, so. A 
couple of purples in there really add to the shading. Can't really see them, but they definitely, they definitely add to the effect. Okay. Oh, will I get all of these stitches with this thread? I don't know. Maybe. It's going to be cutting it close, though. We shall see. funny. Our, our guinea pig really likes the Christmas tree now. <laughs> Every time I take her out of her cage and put her on our rug, she wanders over to the Christmas tree and walks around on the top of the tree skirt. <laughs> Usually she would hide under our coffee table because uh, they're prey animals. They feel safer when they're underneath something. Yeah. Although she used to go up to the top of her perch on her, um, on her, in her cage and sleep up there, but then she got too old and walking up the ramp was hard for her, so she stopped going up there. So yeah, I moved her, uh, her food bowls and stuff down to the lower edge and she was half, the lower level and she was happier. Yeah, I thought, oh, maybe that's the end, but yeah, she's been around for almost a year since then. So yeah, she just keeps hanging on. She's an old piggy. <clears throat> Yeah, usually they need to have a buddy, but um, ours is quite happy alone. We tried and she she fought with any other piggy that uh, we introduced to her. So <laughs> yeah, I guess she's a loner. Yeah, okay, I did manage to get all these stitches done with that one piece of thread. That was nice. That's perfect. I love when that works out that way. Smooth that out so it won't snarl when I'm trying to pull it through the fabric because that has happened before. It kind of sucked. I'm not as rushed for Christmas this year. I had a few years ago, I'd been on the wait list for surgery for months and it finally came through mid-December. So yeah, I didn't make any Christmas cookies until after Christmas that year because I was recovering. Oh. I think I ended up wrapping my kids' gifts like Christmas Eve night. <laughs> oh... Yeah, I was not very well prepared that year. Okay, I was just double checking with my grid line that I was parking in the correct spot. 
let's see, is this threaded? No, it is not, I don't think. Oh, actually it is, I lied. Okay, yeah, it was one of those, it's borderline on the uh, edge there. And if it wasn't threaded, I probably wouldn't have bothered to thread it to just do the one stitch, but as it is still threaded, I will do it. Oh yes, I unthreaded this earlier because it was kind of borderline, but you know what? I'm gonna just sort of go outside of my diagonal bit and carry these threads down to the edge because it is so close. And I won't be closing anything in to do that, so. So sometimes I carry on a little further past the diagonal before I go back up to the top and start my way down again. This one, of course, I'm going to because it's below that 60 grid line, and I'm not doing anything below that. That's where my cutoff is. Again with that one. Okay, 30, 41. I think this one's purple, if I'm remembering correctly. 30, 41. Yeah. Very light. Mauve color. Okay, there we go. So I could do this stitch here and then park it right below, but I think I'm gonna park it up here 
because below that is where I'm cutting it off at the 60. So that way I won't have to add another thread later. I'm just going to park this one up here and then carry on with it. Of course, that'll be probably in my next diagonal. Are they going to plow our street? Maybe. It's a big backhoe going by. I know my husband said they were plowing streets a couple streets over, so I don't know. Ours doesn't always get plowed. Some years it gets missed entirely. We're some of the last ones to get plowed. Oh my gosh. This really tangled itself up while I was trying to pull a thread out. I hate when that happens. Oh my gosh. How did you get so tangled up? Ah, there we go. Okay, there we go, good. I'm a little worried I was gonna have to cut that tangle, which I hate doing, but I was able to unsnarl it, so we are all good. Usually when we do get plowed our street, it's uh, because there's a lot of snow on the ground and we're about to get a big thaw. So they do it then to avoid uh, flooding. Oh man, we had flooding once really bad. My husband called me, this is when we still worked at the same place, and I said, don't bother coming into work because he says your, your vehicle's not going to make it through. He had a full-size truck and it just barely, barely made it through because um, a couple of the... Uh, the rain sewers got totally clogged and uh, we had a ton of rain at the same time. So it was just a combination of those factors and yeah, the streets were totally clogged. Some dumpsters got swept away down the street. There was even somebody's little car, they had like a little sprint or something that actually got swept down the road. Like, yikes, sucks to be you. Oh dear. Okay, let's see. I may just go to the top again now this point yeah some of this is sort of you know I haven't gotten quite up to the grid line yet but I think like I've said before I don't follow a perfect diagonal sometimes I stop before the line and sometimes I go past the line when it makes sense to do that let's try not to tie that into a knot there we go so yeah that's what I think I'm gonna do kind of tidy this up here. Try and divide these between threads that are still in this area and the threads that are for the next pass. Okay. You can see along that left-hand side, there's a block of color that's all the same. And then we've got some confetti coming up. This is where the, 
the top of the Happy Mask Salesman uh, backpack starts. And then this is still sort of background, so. There we go. Oh, you do not want to cooperate, do you? Another new color. Ah, and another blue. <laughs> three, three, two, five. Okay, just a single stitch there. Yeah, like I've said, not a lot of confetti in this pattern, but I think any full coverage pattern with any kind of detail is always going to have some. such a love-hate relationship with the confetti can get feel like quite a slog sometimes to get through it but then the detail it adds is makes it all worth it in the long run oh if I could thread this without shredding it that would be great like to leave slack in my grid line so it doesn't distort the fabric where but also have to be careful when there is slack that you don't get confused that is one drawback I suppose of a sewn on rather than drawn on grid oh I put this in the wrong place yeah look at that silly me 
I was not paying attention. I was on the wrong side of the grid line there. Okay, let's try that again. Let's see if I can pull this out. No, you're not going to cooperate, are you? Okay. I will have to. That's one drawback of starting the threads from the front. Once you pull that loop to the back, undoing it from the front is really tough. So yeah, if you make a mistake, then often I'll have to cut it to free it, but that's not a problem. Okay. Let me try that again. But yeah, this is why I grid. <laughs> I might not have caught that mistake without a grid that quickly. And when you've stitched around with other threads and they end up piercing this thread, then removing it is really tough. I had one, I tried to pull it back and it actually broke because uh, the uh, hold of uh, other threads on it was just too strong. 3752, a very light blue, I believe. 3752. Yeah, very pale blue. Colors, of course, the color that is supposed to be there is pretty close, so, you know, some people might decide to just leave it. <laughs> Call it personalization, especially when it is background, you don't notice it as much. only got one thread there that won't work Okay. Oh, my guinea pig is going nuts, grinding her teeth at me. She wants her vegetables now. So uh, I think I'll take a break there. So um, thank you for joining me today. And I hope to see you here again another time. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye.